Attention viewer, you are watching the world's biggest Monster Truck Diecast YouTube channel. This is Monster Jam OCD. Well, welcome back everyone to another Monster Jam OC review video. Today is yet another 124 skill review. As I mentioned in my Mix 5 review, these are going to become part of my channel uh, more often than they have been in the past. So we are going to hopefully go back in time and review the other mixes that I have not yet reviewed on this channel, which include basically Mix 1 through 4, because I only did half of Mix 1 at the time, and uh, I've done Mix 5, and now we're doing Mix 6, but I am missing those first, technically the first four mixes on this channel. And since we're in this pandemic right now, I feel like it would just be uh, even more content for you guys anyway. So hopefully we can go back. I will request those other mixes from Spinmaster. Uh, it shouldn't be hard to get them because they're older stock. So I'll let you guys know, and you'll probably just see the videos if I get them. But today we have the Mix 6 review, and Mix 6 was due for May 1st, and it has already hit store shelves, which is pretty cool. Mix 6 has uh, two trucks that I think are the coolest ones of the 124 scale by Spinmaster so far. And also another one, besides Megalodon right here, uh, there is another truck in this mix that I think also people are really excited for. Uh, but we're starting here with Megalodon today because Megalodon has already been released once before in the uh, Mix 1 assortment, which had basically the same body. It actually had worse graphics, or these are actually really good graphics, I should say, uh, less clear graphics. I'm not going to say worse because these are not bad at all. Um, this is a thing that they've been working on. As I mentioned in Mix 5, the graphics quality on 124 scale specifically has been drastically improved upon since the first mix especially. Uh, but even Mix 4, the change from then to now is uh, phenomenal. So you can see how clear this Megalodon, I mean it looks like the real truck. It's, it's basically uh, an exact replica of the real truck. I love how this uh, the graphics and the body look especially. But as far as what this uh, appears to be in terms of a difference in Megalodon, uh, the original Megalodon had a chrome motor. It did not have the shock printing, which is a new feature I'll talk about in a second. And it had gray rims with a light blue bead. And actually, initially, it had a dark navy blue bead lock as one of its variants. But uh, today we have these kind of teal blue turquoise rims uh, with the BKT printing, the gray motor, and the reason they did a gray motor is because they printed on, this is something for the 124 skill that they started doing in Mix 4, and now they're doing it more often than not. Uh, they started doing these shock printing. So this is the first uh, Megalodon and one of the first trucks ever to have these shocks printed on in chrome. So you can see here, uh, they, they don't paint or they don't chrome the motor out when they do the shock printing. So it's kind of a trade-off. At the same time, I think it looks even cooler with the gray motor. Honestly, I think it actually looks better than the chrome motor, in my opinion, when it has the shock printing. So it's a pretty cool model. The rest of the model is the same as the Mix 1 assortment. Uh, so I'm not going to go too into it. You guys know what Megalodon looks like, but there's the quick run through of the Megalodon 124 scale. And this is one I think fans are going to be really excited for, especially the fans of the Crazy Bull driver, Becky McDonough, El Toro Loco Yellow, the throwback design to when it ran a yellow body, and also, uh, which we had already received back in, I think, Mix 4, the black El Toro Loco. So there was actually three running El Toro Locos at one time. Uh, if you guys remember that time in Monstrum history, one of the best times, especially because they had the color-coded bodies, there was three different El Toro Locos. And um, unfortunately, Mosgym has moved away from those bodies. Uh, I think it gave the actual tour a lot more character and um, kind of substance to see. But I think that um, them making this again is really cool, though, because I never had uh, a 124 scale yellow Toro Loco. And I really was never a big fan of the Hot Wheels trucks. I was just not really a big collector of the 124s. I did get a few very specific ones. I was very specific with what I collected from them. But uh, now that they are doing them again with far more, in my opinion, detail and accuracy, uh, I have no reason but to get them from Spin Master. So here is the yellow Toro Loco. You can see the paint, of course, is yellow. They have the Tor Accurate flames instead of being the cartoon flames. It is the Tor Accurate shape with the purple-tipped flames as the real-life truck had. The yellow Toro Loco logo, which is, of course, red with purple highlights. Uh, the chrome motor, no shock printing. It has purple bead locks like the real truck and gray rims. The tailgate is awesome too. Also too accurate to the real life truck. Uh, Mossgem.com, El Toro Loco. Uh, negative spacebar is printed on. And um, same stuff going on here. 
And as you can see, the casting for the 124 Skeletor Loco is one of my favorites out of all the castings. Like I mentioned with Megalodon, it looks like the real truck. This thing looks like the real truck did at one point in time. The casting for El Toro Loco, uh, which was one of my least favorites of the original set uh, back in mix one of 164 scale, has been uh, something that has grown on me a lot. I mean, they have such a big portion of detail on this truck that it's hard to refute it. Uh, I love the El Toro Loco casting. So with the yellow one, it looks even more insane. Uh, and then you got the accurate chin hairs here uh, and then the flames on the nostril or coming out of the nostrils there with the purple. And then as you can see, they even did the purple and uh, orange tipped uh, horns here with the red base like the real life truck had as well. The only thing that this truck does not have, which is a very uh, extreme detail, I would say, even for Spin Master, is a bandana for Becky McDonough. But that leaves it up to the customizers to do their own version if they choose to do so. So there is the yellow El Toro Loco for 124 scale returning this year by Spin Master. We will see a 164 scale yellow El Toro Loco in the future mix of, I think it's mix... 13 or 14 uh, for yellow Toro Loco. So we will see this again in 164 scale, but for right now, this is the 124 scale. I have decided to save the best for last in my opinion and go with the second best next up, which is the surprise return of the 30th anniversary Grave Digger Green. Now this is outstanding. When they first announced this to me, um, that they're making this again and our, we were doing a showroom tour and they do this every fall and spring with me. They show me what's coming up for the 124s and 164s, give me a whole thing. But when this was on the list of the master list for 124 scale, I first said, are you guys finalizing that? And they said they hadn't finalized at the time. But then when um, in January I was at the office, they handed me this for review. I was like, oh my gosh, they actually did approve them. So I am super, super excited to see the 124 scale 30th anniversary of Gravedigger return for two reasons. One, accuracy, because now we have far more accuracy than we did with the Mattel casting. And two, now the collectors that have been asking for these to return because they couldn't find it back in 2012 have the opportunity to own it themselves. Now, I want to address something that I've heard and I've seen feedback on and I've seen a couple collectors, not a majority, but some of them, because I am the mediator between collectors and the company. I get the issue of devaluing Hot Wheels trucks and the concerns that collectors have about their own collections. And yes, in a way, this could devalue Hot Wheels 124 scale uh, 30th anniversary grave diggers. At the same time, I hear the same debate from the same people that Hot Wheels' name will allow it to forever carry a certain value and that it will never be devalued by Spin Master. So it's kind of a contradictory argument to say that this is going to devalue Hot Wheels when you say that the Hot Wheels name will never be devalued. So it's kind of a hard thing to debate. I see the point. I understand what they're saying. They're upset that their trucks are going to be far less valuable. Possibly. We don't know that yet. Uh, in the future because this version of the truck has been re-released. At the same time, I urge these collectors to look at the other side of the argument, which is the fact that some of us uh, never saw these in stores because of the popularity at the time. But I do respect their opinions and I have given that feedback to the team for future use. But today we're gonna actually review this. I'm sorry for going off on that long rant. Um, this is the 124 scale edition of the 30th anniversary Gravedigger Green by Spin Master. And as you may remember, as I just mentioned also previously, uh, this is a truck that the uh, Hot Wheels team did do back in 2012 for the 30th anniversary Gravedigger design uh, and actual anniversary. They had a 124 scale. And like I just said, a true story, I never found one in stores. I would have bought it and compared them on screen. But anyway, we have the 164 scale so you can see the difference. The only major differences are three things. Uh, one, this Hot Wheels and Mosh Jam logo obviously have been removed. The Hot Wheels logo on the tombstone, which you can't really see here, has been changed out with Spin Master. I'll show you that in a second. And three, the flames, which is something that Spin Master did mess up, and I'll note that for the team here. Uh, and hopefully if they release this in 164 scale, they'll fix them. The flames have a red outline and the stripe, and that was something that Spin Master, I guess, didn't see. Um, also... This is too white of a color for these um, details, but I'll mention that to the team for future use if they ever make a 164 scale, because this one's obviously the more collected line and I think it should be more accurate. 
Uh, so there is the 164 scale 30th anniversary Gravedigger Green by Hot Wheels. And here is the brand new 2020 edition of the Gravedigger 30th anniversary. So this is a reproduced edition of the past design. Uh, one of two designs that Dennis ran during his season. I believe he alternated between purple and green um, as the sole driver of this specific design. This has now way more accurate uh, styles than the previous edition from Hot Wheels. Um, that's just fact because it does have the door removed from this side as a real life accuracy. So you can see the door um, on this side is here, but not on this side. It also has, well, this is not an accuracy, but it's a new change. The Spin Master logo has been swapped in there where Hot Wheels once was. But the funniest thing is, is the tombstones are the same as they were back in the day. So you can see Avenger is here, uh, Mohawk Warrior, Maximum Destruction Monster Mutt, El Toro Loco, Adam and Ryan, uh, Monster Mutt, Dalmatian, I believe that's Dalmatian. Yes, and then Medusa. So Medusa being there is kind of an iffy thing because of course she is no longer with Monster Jam, but her tombstone still remains on the truck. And then the graphics itself, they're just insane. They're really clear. Everything is legible. The uh, actual design, it actually has become my favorite, or actually I should say one of my favorite 124 skills I've ever had, um, just because of how clear the graphics are and how the paint is actually metallic. That's a first or one of the first ever for Spin Master. So that's really cool. And there's the graphic on the roof there. And there are the championships that Dennis had uh, right there. Like I said, the hood is inaccurate because the first off the flames are a little too bright and the outline is missing. But again, this is something I'm noting now for Spin Master to fix for future editions of uh, 30th Anniversary Grave Digger. But there are the headlights and there is the truck itself, chrome motor. Again, the bead locks, gray rims, BKTs, a very accurate version of this old style body. Eight years ago, this debuted and now we have it yet again for those collectors who maybe want to get it again or never found it or are Grave Digger fans. All of the above, I think it's a win-win for most of us. For other people, I understand their frustrations and hopefully they'll forgive Spin Master at some point. So this is the brand new Big Kahuna. As you can see, it has the accurate, first off, accurate shocks. Check that out. Gold shocks, the accurate colored dark gray motor, accurate colored roll cage and chassis, and of course, accurate colored bead locks and rims. So this is probably one of the most accurately colored trucks of all time from a 124 scale. Uh, I absolutely see no issues with the actual, uh, besides the body, everything else is perfect. Um, and that's not to say the body isn't perfect. It is missing a few sponsors, but that's about it. Uh, so you can see here the brand new casting for 124 scale. So far, there are no plans to make this in 164 scale, but I have suggested it to the team because of the popularity of this design specifically. So you can see it is a woody style, uh, kind of an SUV. It has Big Kuna, the Tiki, Moss Jam, a lot of rust, of course, the same style rust and color as the C10. There are the Tikis on the hood there, the Shaka symbol with the skeleton, the roof here, Big Kahuna. And you can see they have engineered the surfboards in there to be sticking out like the real truck had. And then here's the other side with Shane England, the uh, Shaka symbol again, and there is that. So it is a very interesting looking truck, but it is perfectly accurate to the real life one that ran in 2019. And that will conclude this review. So please let me know your feedback first off on the 30th anniversary Gravedigger returning. I want to hear everyone's feedback if they can give it so I can share it with the team. Although I don't see the Spin Master team switching up what they want to do. And I totally support their decisions on making things from the past. We still want your guys' opinions and we value that feedback. So please comment below. Let me know what you guys think about that. And also the assortment as you just saw it in the comments below as well. I will see you guys next time. Thank you to Team Spin Master for supplying these for review. And until next time, this is Reiner Moss, Jim OCD, signing out.